Okay, so I'm going to start with an example of an ellipse. So I'm just going to start with these values right here. So eigenvec or eigenvalues of 1, eigenvalue of 6, um, and their correspond corresponding eigenvectors there before they're normalized. So this gives us ev everything we need to know. Um, because both of our eigenvalues are positive, we know that it's going to be an ellipse. Um, so that's the form that it's going to be in. Uh, if one was negative, the other was positive. It would be the other rectangular shape, which I'll go over next. Um, but we know this is this one's going to be an ellipse. So I'm going to start by drawing our x and y axis. That's pretty bad. Okay, so we want to start by defining our um, equation. It doesn't really matter which variable is alpha, which one's beta. I'm going to choose one as alpha and six as beta. So our equation is going to be something like um, alpha squared plus 6 beta squared equals 1. Um, and that's just corresponding with the eigenvalues. And we want to get that into the form of an ellipse. And the form of an ellipse is, um, what is it, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, something like that. Um, but basically, in order to convert our coefficients into points on the graph, we want to convert our alpha and beta coefficients into a and b. So for example, alpha in this case is 1, so our alpha is 1 over 1, and if we square root that, we just get 1. So a is equal to 1, but b is a little bit more tricky, so if we convert b into that formula, where it's y squared over b, um, then that would make b squared 1 sixth, and in order to get b, we do b is square root of 1 sixth. So b equals square root 1 sixth. And that's roughly equal to about 0.4. So now we really have everything that we need to graph this out. So let's start by drawing our alpha and um, our beta axes. Um, and we get those from these two coordinate matrices up here, or matrices up here. Um, so let's start by drawing alpha. So as we said, we chose our first eigenvalue as alpha. So that's 2, 1. So if we graph that over here, I'm going to just draw it out real quick. So pretend, that's not really to scale, but pretend this is the coordinate grid. Yeah. So our point is going to be 2, 1. So we go over 2, 1. That's right here. And we know that this um, axis has to go through the origin. So we're going to have a corresponding point at negative 2, negative 1 over here. And that's going to be our alpha. And that's a bad line, but we get the point. Um, and we do the same thing for beta using our coordinate matrix. So that's negative 1, 2. So you go negative 1, 2. That's up here. Corresponding point down here because it has to go through the origin. This is going to be beta. And now that we have that, we know that a is 1, b is 0.4. So since a is 1, we graph that on the alpha line. Um, so we go about 1 unit-ish. It doesn't have to be super exact for this example. We go about a unit um, on each uh, corresponding axis from the origin. And then since beta is 0.4, we're going to go about half that distance for our, uh, along our beta axis. And then we just use those, those points to draw uh, an ellipse. And that's pretty much all you do for that. Um, let's go ahead and walk through the other type of graph. So for this example, I'm just going to use another one from the review. So let's say the eigenvalues are 11 with corresponding eigenvector 3, 2. And then second eigenvalue is negative 2, corresponding eigenvector of negative 2, 3. So same thing as before, we're going to set up our equation. Um, so that will be... 11 alpha minus 2 beta equals 1. And it doesn't matter which eigenvalue you choose to come first, like I said, um, because 
it'll end up being the same because your axes are based on the coordinate matrices. So, um, because of that, we want to get it back into, oh, sorry, we're going to get back into our ellipse form. So that's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So that'll give us our alpha is going to be square root 1 over 11. Same way we did it as before, getting it into that form, which is about 0.3. Our beta is going to be, um, and notice that our beta is negative right here. So we want to put that negative on the outside of here. So ne um, negative square root 1 half. And that's about negative 0.7. Um, and so the way we graph it is pretty similar because um, we use, we, we do the same thing to find the axes. So since uh, our coordinates are 3 and 2, I'm just going to do roughly 3. Ah, my pen's missing out. So for our alpha, our coordinate matrix is 3, 2. So we're going to go 3 over 3 up 2 right here. And because that has to go through the origin, I'm going to draw a corresponding dot over here. And that's going to be our alpha. Um, same thing for our beta, negative 2, 3. So that first point's up here, and we have a corresponding point down here. That's our beta. Um, and same thing as before. We're going to want to... Our alpha is 0.3 over here. Um, so we're going to want to graph that along the alpha axis. Um, go about... This is not going to really be to scale. But go about 0.3 over here. And same thing, same distance on the other side. And then our beta is going to be about twice that along the, uh, the other axis. So roughly double that, make these points. And this is where it gets kind of tricky. So what you want to do is actually make a box around this using these four points along the edges, not the corners of the box. And then after you do that, you're going to want to draw a line. Oh, that's a terrible line through the diagonals of the box. And that will kind of give you your bounds for this line that we're about to draw. And another thing you want to know is that this graph always opens towards the positive number, which in this case, or the positive axis, which in this case is alpha. So our graph is going to open going this way, open towards alpha. If beta was positive, it would open going this way. Um, but to draw it, we use these lines along the corners of the rectangle um, and the point to graph it. So it'll look something like this. That's pretty bad, but I think you can get the idea. And yeah, that's pretty much how you graph both of them. Thanks for watching.